Hi guys, Stephanie here, and in today's video, we are looking at what makes a good trail horse. Now, I believe the answer to this question may be different for you than it is for me versus somebody else watching this video. So today in part one, I'm going to be encouraging you to look at questions around who you are as a rider and what you want out of the trail riding experience. And then in part two, I'll be sharing my list of things that I personally would be prioritizing in shopping for a horse. So if you're interested in watching both parts of the video, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload part two. All right, let's get started. So the first question I would be asking myself is what level of a rider am I? I wanna make sure that I am looking at horses that are going to be suitable for the level of experience and ridership that I have. As a beginner, I was looking at horses that were labeled um, husband horses, beginner safe horses, kids safe horses, family safe horses, bomb proof horses, which the term bomb proof is, is somewhat controversial depending on who you talk to. But those were some of the search terms that I was looking at. And I was looking at older horses that had lots of experience because I wanted a horse that was going to be safe for the fact that I didn't really know a whole lot what I was doing. I strongly encourage folks that are looking to get into horses to at least take some lessons. And the reason for that is not to be a party pooper and slow down your excitement and entry into getting a horse. It's more to actually benefit you and open up the world of available horses for you. If you increase your level of riding skill to maybe a more intermediate or at least an advanced beginner level, it opens up a wider range of potential and prospective horses to choose from. The next question I would be asking myself is what kind of trails do I plan to ride? Now, if you aren't quite sure about the trails in your area, now is the great time to do that research. And I can give you some tips on how to do that. I use an app called All Trails to scout out trails in my area. There's also a desktop version. Another thing that I do more commonly actually is I check out the Parks and Recreation Department website for the county that I live in. Now this is how it works in California. If you live in other states or outside of the United States, the situation might be different for you. But basically I go to the Parks and Rec Department for the county. That'll give me the list of the parks in the area. And from there, I can usually find PDF maps of those parks. And on those maps, I can see which trails are designated specifically for equestrians. I would be hiking those trails and I would be paying attention to a couple of different things. I'd be looking at terrain and I would be looking at obstacles. So from the terrain standpoint, I would be going, okay, what's the footing like in my area? Are the trails really rocky where I'm at? Um, do I have a lot of steep drop-offs and narrow single track trails? In which case, maybe I would be prioritizing a horse with really hard feet or really uh, sure-footed horse with experience on these types of trails. If I have a lot of low hanging trees and narrow brush, I might be prioritizing a horse that's on the smaller side to be able to navigate that stuff without a lot of discomfort and trees whacking me in the head. If you've watched my video on the pros and cons of draft horses for trail, which I'll link to up here, you'll know that that's one of my uh, least favorite things about draft horses is I'm constantly getting whacked in the face riding fame on trail. I would also be looking at the obstacles that are common in my area. So in the Silicon Valley, we have a lot of cyclists. So dealing with cyclists is something that I would be looking for in a horse. Are they comfortable around bikes? Uh, we have bridges here. We have water crossings here. We have a lot of wildlife here. Tons of deer, buzzards that fly out of nowhere, rabbits, off-leash dogs. Another very common one. Uh, Fame and I have had some run-ins with some not so friendly dogs. Uh, so these are the types of things that I would be looking at in terms of a horse's trail experience so that it's compatible with the types of trails that I like to ride. I would be asking myself, what is my availability for riding? So how often can I go out and ride? How long do I want to go out and ride for? Uh, if I'm someone that wants to go out three and four days a week and ride for four hours at a time, I'm going to need a different trail horse than someone who maybe is going out on Saturdays and Sundays for an hour or two with friends. There are some horses that you can pull straight out of pasture or straight out of their paddock and get on them and they are the same horse that you got off of last time and they're very calm and relaxed. And there are some horses that need uh, consistent riding, they need a lot of groundwork, they need a lot of extra uh, activity and time out in order to be safe 
to ride on trail. And so that is an important consideration that I would be looking at based on my schedule. I do know some people who do sort of the weekend warrior thing effectively, but they are usually doing a combination of keeping the horse in pasture, so the horse has a lot of room to roam and stretch its legs and get activity. They may also be leasing their horse during the week, so someone else is riding that horse uh, very often in the arena so that the horse gets some, some additional time uh, ridden. They may be paying a trainer during the week to work with their horse so that when they pull their horse out on Saturday, that horse is relaxed and focused. And they may also be taking advantage of uh, turnout time. And this is a service that uh, most people in my area, you pay the barn for or you coordinate with a friend to turn out horses on different evenings when you get off of work. And so, you know, combination of those factors may allow them to have a horse that has a little bit more energy, but that they can only manage to ride on the weekends. So having a horse that's got an energy level and riding requirement needs uh, is a big thing that I would be looking at when I'm looking at a trail horse. And some of this is personality based, some of it's breed based, some of it's age related, some of it is the context and the environment in which the horse is kept. But those are factors that is going to be a big part of whether or not we're a good fit on trail. So I would also be asking myself, do I want to be spending my trail riding time solo? Or am I planning to go out socially in groups or maybe a combination of both? If I'm someone who wants to ride out alone, then I'm gonna be prioritizing an experienced horse that is not buddy sour or barn sour, uh, who is confident enough to go out alone. I'm asking a lot of a horse to ride out by itself. If I am someone who plans to do a lot of group and social riding, then I might be prioritizing a horse that is very calm around other horses and very relaxed riding in groups. I would probably be looking at that horse being able to ride both in the front as the lead horse, in the middle of the pack, and sort of at the end. A lot of these sale ads will emphasize that. If a horse is comfortable both leading and being in the middle and following, usually they will mention that sort of thing as an extra plus that that horse is able to do. You know, some horses kick, some horses aren't comfortable when other horses are near them, some horses are very racy and competitive with other horses. Uh, some horses absolutely have to be the lead horse. Some horses aren't comfortable being the lead horse and they prefer to have another horse to follow. So these are some things that I would be considering depending on whether I wanted to be riding by myself or riding with groups of people. And along that train of thought, I would be asking myself who I plan to ride with if I am planning to ride in groups. So if most of my friends have quarter horses, they will likely be going at a particular pace. And if I wanna be able to ride with them, then it would behoove me to get a horse that is a quarter horse that will ride a similar pace. If I'm someone who has a bunch of friends with gated horses, I'm probably gonna be looking at a gated horse. I have to say, I have learned from experience that when you are trying to have a conversation with someone and your horse is way up here and their horse is way back there, it makes for a slightly frustrating ride. And it's not the end of the world. Uh, naturally, you know, when you get a bunch of people together on trail, some horses are gonna be faster than others and you know, people make compensations for it. One of the challenges that I've had with Fame is that he is very much ahead of the natural pace of most quarter horses that we ride with pretty much every quarter horse that we ride with, uh, he tends to actually walk at a pace closer to what gated horses walk at. And so it's presented some challenges for us, or for me socially, uh, because we're usually quite far ahead of everyone. And so I'm circling to kind of slow down and let everyone catch up, or I, we might be stopping, or they may be trotting to catch up with me. And so it's a dynamic that I realized uh, from a social standpoint, most of my trail riding social life isn't really even so much about the person to person stuff as it is about the dynamics of the horses, the paces they go and how well they get along with each other. Speaking of pace, I would also be asking myself if I enjoy speed. There's a huge difference between folks who like to ride uh, at a trot and a lope or a canter on the trail most of the time and folks that prefer to take it easy and just go for a nice, quiet, enjoyable walk. 
And so some horses are better suited for that than others. Uh, of course, there's always a conditioning factor at play as well. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, horses do have a natural pace that they like to go. And some horses really enjoy being more forward on the trail. They are just naturally forward horses. Some horses like to just kind of take it easy and they're more easygoing. If I am someone that likes to go fast, I'm probably gonna be looking at a more forward horse. When I was a beginner rider, for sure, I was looking at sort of quieter, slower horses, or if that's just how I want to enjoy the trail, then I'm probably going to be happier on a horse that's got a slower pace. I recently took some lessons on a gated horse and oh my gosh, was that fun! I totally get it now. Those of you who have gated horses, I get it. We basically were down the trail and it was a really exhilarating, fun experience. I would also strive to be super honest about my personality. Just like people, horses have personalities and you get two personalities together and sometimes the dynamic works really well and sometimes the dynamic doesn't work so well. And so I would be aiming for harmony in terms of my personality, my natural tendencies. If I'm someone who maybe is prone to anxiety, I'm probably not going to be super happy with an equally anxious horse. It's going to take a lot of work for me to get that horse into a relaxed place and myself. If I'm someone who tends to be more impatient or someone who's on the more timid side, you know, some horses are going to be a better fit for me than others. Some horses are going to be really challenging for me because of my personality and my natural bent. So I think being um, realistic and being honest about that dynamic and those personality traits uh, are very helpful in terms of figuring out what is a good trail horse. One thing that I will share that's kind of connected to the personality thing, when I was brand new to horses and a beginner rider, one of the things that I loved about being on trail is the freedom to kind of zone out and look at the trees, look at the flowers, look at the sky, daydream, kind of go off in my head while I was riding my horse. And thankfully, because I had uh, such an experienced, confident horse, uh, it ended up being okay. We were safe and he took really good care of me. Now with fame, that's not really so much our dynamic. Uh, I need to do more taking care of him. He's still gaining his experience and so there's a lot more that I need to pay attention to and to um, take care of and reassure him of or manage the reins or my seat, all these little details that to be honest, I actually went through a little bit of a grieving process because I had to come to a place where I realized that I needed to be a different person for fame than I was for Jake in order for us to have a successful trail experience. And that shift was a little bit of a challenging shift for me to make, but once I realized it, it put my expectations in a different place and I was able to enjoy being on the trail more. That's another reason why I would encourage you to really think about the type of riding experience you wanna have and the type of person that you naturally tend to be uh, because if I wasn't willing to become a different person for fame and to be more present, more conscious, more aware of how to take care of him, how to guide him, we could end up in some serious trouble. So that was a big part of the dynamic of us having a good trail experience moving forward. And it just highlights the difference, I think, between the different types of horses, the amount of experience they have, and then also the shift that I needed to make as a person internally in order to have a good experience with those two different horses. I would love to hear you weigh in on this, so feel free to leave me a comment down below. As I mentioned, there is a part two to this video, so if you'd like to watch that, I encourage you to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.